Hey everyone, welcome to Zero Labs. Today is Monday, August 24th, 2015. And this is a video quite a few of you have been asking me for. Uh, this is my most recent update on the Keshi Plasma Reactor Experiment. So yes, the roof is finally done, and I am finally back onto the project. Uh, it has been moving forward while the while the uh, roof project was ongoing. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to bring any of that to you because I was too busy working on the roof. Anyway, that's done. I'm tired, but uh, it's over. What you see here is a container of what is purported to be carbon dioxide GANS, G-A-N-S, or gas in nanostate, according to Moraine Kesh. Um, this is the jugs or the, the little uh, cut bottles of uh, soft drink that I used to uh, collect the GANS in. In this picture here, you see the GANs forming in the bottom of the of the containers, almost like snowflakes at the bottom of the containers. Uh, what creates the process is the fact that the nano-coated copper plates on one side and the zinc plates on the other side create a small battery. And when you short the electrodes together, current flows between the electrodes. The copper plate is a positive electrode and the zinc plate is a negative electrode. So the electrons flow from the copper plate through to the zinc plate and out into the solution. What happens over time, however, is that the amount of current that is supplied falls off rather quickly. So you get, you get a, a a, a high starting current someplace in the order of as much as 100 milliamps uh, and then it, it drops off quite rapidly as the um, as the process starts to take place and as the copper plate starts to become plated with zinc from the zinc plate and in this case then what happens is the two dissimilar metals become less dissimilar or they become more similar Hence, the amount of voltage and the amount of current available decreases. And the amount of time it takes to produce GANs at the end of a cycle increases dramatically. What you can do is you can simply apply a small DC voltage to help it along and keep the current flowing. I like to keep the current flowing someplace around 15, between 15 and 30 milliamps. 15 milliamps really is enough to uh, create this byproduct that is supposed to be carbon dioxide GANs. But what happens is, as you can see, is that the plates over time, the copper plates, become thoroughly plated with zinc from the zinc electrodes. And the zinc electrodes become quite pitted. Now I don't know if the black nano coating layer on the copper plates still exists underneath the zinc plating or whether or not it was replaced by the zinc plating, but in any event, the process is the same. Adding a small voltage uh, simply helps it along and keeps it <laughs> producing the amount of GANs that you want uh, in the time frame that you want. Now, there are a number of things I can tell you about this mystery chemical here, all right? Uh, number one, I don't for a moment believe that this is carbon dioxide in any way, shape, or form. Uh, one thing for sure is, this is not a liquid. This is not a heavier than water liquid. What this is, is a particulate in suspension in water. And as I have been concentrating it, what I've been doing is, I've been allowing it to sit, 
and then I would allow it to settle and take the layer of clear water at the top. If I can find my syringe, I had it. Ah, here it is. So I've got this 30 millimeter syringe with a piece of uh, PTFE pipe that uh, is rather stiff and I simply reach into the bottle and I pull off the top layer of the water and uh, concentrate it in that fashion. I just simply collect the water in a container and then I stir it up a little bit and let it settle again. I've done this mm, probably seven or eight times now or more and uh, where, where I started with almost half a bottle of the original GANS. This, this was almost half full. It is now only about one quarter full uh, of this concentrated material at the bottom. Uh, I have concentrated it now to the point where it is closer to a slurry than it is um, just suspended particles. I can take it and when I stir it with my little drink straw at the bottom you can feel the resistance of the solid particles in suspension in this concentrated solution that I've got here. So it is not a liquid, it is a solid in suspension and if you do let it dry it becomes a, uh, a, a, so a powder of some form. Um, it is very white and a good chemist could probably tell you that this is a byproduct of electrolysis uh, using zinc plates in a saline solution. Um, if a good chemist would like to step forward and tell me what this really is, I'd appreciate that. Um, otherwise, uh, if you have access to lab facilities, I'd be happy to send you a sample of this so that you can put it in a um, mass spectrometer or, or a chromatograph or whatever it is you're going to use to analyze this material and tell me what it is. That, that would be greatly appreciated as well. Um, I've also begun working on the reactor chambers. This is a ping pong ball that I cut in half with a razor blade and you can see in this half right here it is coated with uh, vapor deposited copper and the way I have been doing that is I've been taking these two electrolytic capacitors in series. Each one of these capacitors is 90,000 microfarads at 40 volts. I have 2.2K bleeder resistors across each one so that when I connect these in series and charge them up to 80 volts, I get an equal distribution of voltage across both of the capacitors, 40 volts across both of these capacitors. Now, let me point out, 80 volts DC lethal voltage all right if you if you find your arm going across this it will bite you and if you if you're conductive enough it will bite you hard enough to kill you so do not try this at home unless you are uh, extremely careful with your procedures and uh, now nah, better yet don't do this at home <laughs> all right uh, but anyway, uh, the, the, the process has come out very nice, and yes, this coating is conductive. So, uh, I'm going to keep going here. The, uh, the next phase is to finish nano-coating the interior of the half shells of the ping pong balls. Assemble them together. I'm going to glue them with uh, one of my favorite adhesives goop adhesive. This is not goop marine. This is just plain old goop adhesive. They're very, very similar. Uh, so I'll reassemble the ping pong balls, glue them again with goop to the top of plastic golf tees, set the golf tees in a bearing assembly that will be driven by the motors, and there will be a small pinhole at the top of the um, ping pong ball where I will fill the balls with the GANS material that was created in the electrolysis process and a syringe. So I'll take my syringe, stick the needle through the little opening, fill them up, reseal the opening, let, let, the, uh, let the seal dry, and I'll have my little reactors uh, all charged up and ready to go. And uh, we'll see if they produce the magical results that are claimed for them. So that's all for now. I hope you're all enjoying this project. 
And uh, as always, please rate, share, comment, and subscribe to my videos. And peace, everyone. And there you have the beginnings of some copper vapor deposition. In three, two, one. Okay, that was a good one. <laughs>